Okay. All right. So just a quick recap. Okay. We're talking about abstract class and then um, the difference between abstract class and interface. And we kind of summarize that one, you know, the major difference is that class can have some code and interface is mostly for signatures. Another one is uh, you can only have one abstract class, but you can have multiple interfaces. So that allows you to do some kind of multi inheritance. Okay. And then for the inheritance, uh, we talk about these examples and what do you do when you try to extend or implement. And we also talk about this very important thing called overwrite, that if you have a hierarchy, if you have an inheritance, then the methods in the child subclasses can overwrite, can rewrite the parent class. But when you try to overwrite it, there are rules that you have to follow, right? You know, make sure they're the same signature, same method name, input parameters. Uh, you do have the opportunity to, to change the visibility accessor, but as I told you last time, you can only go from one way to the other, not the other, uh, not the other way back. Okay, so the just try to memorize, no, try not to memorize it. Try to understand it with the example, right? So if something is already possible in the parent class, okay, you become a child. You need to make sure that one's still possible. You can do more about it, but you do not want to limit it, constrain it, right? So that's why if you can uh, actually uh, change from protected to public, that's fine. But if something already in public, then if you wanna restrain, uh, restrict it to be protected, that's not okay because a lot of color will assume that they can do this one, but then it turns out you can't with, with your specific subclass. Okay, so that's basically it. Sorry, right. Professor, just quick question. Are these slides are posted no, so far? Not yet, or no? not yet, because these are quiz slides. I don't wanna put it there so everyone can see the answers. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that after today. All right, so I'll finish, yeah, I'll finish the slide today and then uh, uh, so we can put that into the, uh, all right. Yeah, other, other slides I'll, I'll, you know, in the future I'll, I'll put it. It wasn't like a bit, like he has to build, you know, like that's what I do. All right, I see. No, I don't All right, let me just mute everyone here, okay. Okay. All right, so that's another question we did. Um, so this, we're, when we went through all the answers. All right, so let's talk about something new. Overloading, does anyone still remember overloading? Yeah. So can anyone, uh, well, I, I put a definition here. So overloading is somewhat similar to overriding, but it's totally different concept. Uh, within one class, right? So you can have this kind of methods, a set of methods that share the same name, same uh, return type, same visibility, but you do have different kind of inputs parameters. Now this is called overloading because now when you're calling one method, you can actually choose different versions. And then the nice thing about overloading is you don't have to explicitly say, oh, I want to call this version, I want to call that version. So the specific version will be depend on the given input parameter. Like in this case, if I give you two integers and then Java will automatically choose this version because that version is the only one that fits to this input. If I give you a string, it will go to here. If I give you a double type and it will choose this one more automatically. So that's how the overwrite works. Oh, sorry, overload. Okay, the overloading had nothing to do with inheritance. Now you can have an overloading in the inheritance, but you don't uh, have to have an inheritance to, to produce overloading. But if you're talking about override, that only you know exists in the parent-child relationship. Okay, it's a big difference between the two concepts. All right, um, this is a kind of a graph that shows the difference between the two concepts. All right, overloading, we're in the same class, same level, you've got a different option that you can decide which one to use. Overriding is that you have two different levels and then the child version is overriding and changing the parent version. Okay, so I think this figure kind of shows ideas in a more clear way. All right, so does anyone still remember uh, overloading? All right. 
Okay, so pretty important concept. Okay, all right, we'll see it on some of the examples. Okay, now uh, that one is very easy. I'll, I'll look at one exercise later on. So, but polymorphism will be the last concept we need to review. All right, so um, it's a very formal term, but uh, you know, again, these are something you already learned, you've been probably using many times. So whenever we talk about polymorphism, now you need to, you need to know a couple of important points. Number one, um, you need to have a inheritance. You need to have a hierarchy in order to have the polymorphism. If you have one class, same bunch of classes, but without any of the inheritance relationship, there is nothing called polymorphism. Secondly, since it's a polymorphism, that means you got a different kind of behavior. That means you need to have different children, different sub-child classes. And they all uh, like inherit extend the same parent class. So there is a hierarchy, there's a you know a kind of a hierarchical uh, structure organization there. And the point of it really talks about that when you have this kind of a structure or organization, when you are trying to call in some of the methods, the specific behavior depends on the um, which object you are using depends on which instance you are in, instantiating. All right, so these are all the conceptual definitions. And I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about, okay? But the best way to, to kind of illustrate the idea is just through an example. All right, so I'll give you one minute to kind of look at this code here. Okay, so this one should be something you already learned in Java in the early days, or maybe even in high school if you took AP Computer Science. Okay, so take a look at this hierarchy and took a look at this kind of a testing code right here. What is the object being created? And then how are you calling this method, all of those? All right, so pretty good. Some of you actually uh, typed the uh, result in the, in the chat. Um, very simple structure, but it just illustrates the polymorphism um, technique, okay? As I mentioned, you must have a hierarchy. In this case, animal is a parent class. You got a two subclasses, dog and cat, and they both extend animals. So that's how you build a hierarchy with the inheritance. Okay, so that's a foundation. Now, once you have this foundation here, okay, so you will have in a parent class a certain behavior, a certain method. Then your subclasses can override it by using exactly the same signature, but by providing a different uh, method body to do something different by overriding it. All right, so that is called polymorphism. Okay, so what, what is the result? The result is now when you are creating the object, you can always declare the object type with the parent class type. Like in this case, both A1 and A2 are type of animal. But when you start to create actual instance, instantiate the instance, instantiate the object, uh, you can choose a specific type. You can choose to create a cat object. You can choose to create a dog object. Then the difference will be when you are calling this the same method, okay, it will be um, looking at the type of the object you're using and choose so that it will determine which version of the method to use, whether it's a cat or a dog or maybe using a parent, okay. So to put it in a very simple way, um, when you are creating object in this way, okay, uh, the actual version of the method you're calling depends on the type of the object you use to instantiate. If you use a cat here, then it's gonna call this cat version. 
if you use the dog pair here, it's going to use the dog version. And of course, if you use animal here, I will call the animal version. Okay, so this right hand side instantiation really determines which version to use if there exists a uh, uh, override. If there's no override, then there's nothing to talk about here. Basically, whatever is available, uh, visible, you can call and just call them. All right, so that's the idea. So the correct answer, yes. So the first one, since this is the type of a cat, when you call make a noise, it will automatically choose overridden version here. So it will print the mail. And then next type object is a type of dog. So it will also create a, and, and make a call this message right here and then print this message part. Okay, so that's the, the correct answer, All right? Okay, so any questions about this one? All right, so let's see some of the question here. All right, Rafi was asking A1 equal to A2. Okay, that's a good question. That's, uh, what, what do you guys think? Okay, so let's see, after this, two, this four lines of code, okay, we make A1 equal to A2, and then we call A1 dot make noise, what that will be. It's gonna be meow. <laughs> what do you all think? That, that was a great question. So basically, <clears throat> I'm gonna type in the chat, okay? So to continue with this code, A1 equal to A2, all right? All right, and then A1 dot noise. So what is the result after this? Yeah, kind of almost half and half, a little bit more on bark. Yeah, 70% maybe. Yeah, so this is not hard, right? So I think the credit is a bark. <clears throat> because simply because you are just assigning the A2 to A1, so A1, A2 are the same thing. So it, when this object, the A1, A2 just have a reference to some kind of memory to that object. So after you do A1 equal to A2, a1 pretty much had the same address as A2. So A1 and A2 are both pointing to that dog object. So when you call A1.make noise, it's gonna call that dog's uh, method for sure. Yeah, exactly. So um, A1 and A2 will be the same thing. All right, you can try it. And, and that's how the assignment works. Okay, you're assigning the A2's object address or reference to A1, so A1 and A2 will be pointing to the same place. All right, is it the same in superfast? I can't remember, but I feel they should be the same because when you are doing this assignment, assignment I think it's probably the same. You are just assigning the pointer address or reference, so they should be you know, like the same value. All right. Okay, so is it this is different, Kellen? So can you explain a little bit? I, I can't again I, I can't remember much of the detail from C. I haven't been programmed that for a long time. Yeah, but then even if you use the pointers, I assume that you're still just giving the pointer of A2 to A1, right? So A1, A2 will be having the same pointer. So they they just uh, point to the same place. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's more efficient for sure. All right. Yeah, so good question. Java deal with pointer or not? Uh, it's actually not, right? Um, Java use a reference and the reference, the, the, the series is kind of a, just like a pointer. Uh, it's just easier, a little bit easier to use and you do not have that much control. That's the main difference. Because when we see the reference, it's still kind of a memory address that pointing to some kind of a space in the memory that allocate, points where that object is. 
but not like a pointer. You can actually increase the pointer by one, by two, you can modify a certain space in the pointer uh, with, you know, that's the thing you can do with CRC plot, but you cannot do that with Java, all right? So Java just gave you that starting position, the reference, or you can consider that address, that's it. So you have a lot less thing you can control, but because of that, you don't need to worry too much things. It's, uh, it's safer, it's easier to use, and it's, uh, it's less error prone. All right. Okay, cool guys, very good points, okay? So let's take a look at the last question I wanna review here, okay? That's gonna be like um, um, the most challenging question. All right, so let's see who can get your answer correct, okay? So here is a kind of a tricky question here, all right? So I'm gonna give you five minutes to think about this one. And then when you're ready, and I'll type your answer again in a chat window. Okay, so a very short piece of a code, two classes only, and the third class is a little test class. Again, we're asking you the output of this program by running it, all right? So I'll give you um, five minutes. All right, think carefully, okay, before you type your answer. <clears throat> So can you just type, because they're gonna print four lines of code, right? Can you just type A, B, uh, like A and B? Just, just type four letters in sequence using A and B. Okay, you don't have to say you are in B or you are in A. Just say, like for example, A, 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 B, A, A, B, B, something like that, all right, okay? Put that in the same line.
All right, so a lot of choices, okay? So we saw a lot of B, 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 okay? So a lot of those. And then it looks like we got some A, B, B, B. Another commonly choose answer is the A, A, B, B. And Wait a second. I also need to think about it. It's a little bit confused, not to me. And uh, okay, yeah, I think I got it. With that, I actually don't think I saw a correct. Oh, actually, you know what? I do saw one. Um, but the correct answer is is really, <laughs> I think I only saw one. Okay, so let's let's do this. Um, could anyone comment on your BBBB option? Anyone who choose BBBB? Yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry, who was that? Um, can you can you talk a little bit more about the BBB? Why? What's your logic behind it? <laughs> you are watching me. See it? Are you you so want to talk about your... A1, Yes, basically A one is basically it's uh -huh. instant of the B basically, and okay. So when we when we calling the so A one test A two. So A2 is basically is from the B, right? It's an instance of the B. Right. So, so it's gonna be, so A1 dot test A2, my logic gonna be B. So it's gonna be your in B. Because, so your Both logic is are, because, so you're saying because- Both of it, them are instance of the B. Yeah, because, you're, you, I, because in the previous example, we said that this type here determines which version to use, right? Yes. Okay, since you are on B and all of these are B, so pretty much when you are calling them and then. But, but maybe to be honest, I'm not sure because A is abstract class. I'm not sure, I'm a little doubt about that part. Maybe it has something behind of it, behind it and I don't know about it. That doesn't but matter. Yeah, abstract or not doesn't matter because. So basically if it, that's why I choose the most, that. Because yeah. all of them are instance of the B, basically you're creating from the class of B. Right. So that's why I said all of them are B. Yeah, yeah. so I think that's a very typical kind of a logic. I think that's why a lot of you are actually choosing Bs, all Bs, all right? You are that's always, why it's wrong. <laughs> you are always in B, okay, good, okay. So let me see a different opinion, okay. A, A, B, B, okay, who chose A, A, B, B? Um, Catherine, you wanna talk about your because I, I, I saw you put the answer really quickly. Catherine, you want to explain a little bit about your thoughts? Okay, so you said A1 is A uh, using this wave. All right, so well, but why why is not using this one? But you know, I know a one is a, but a is also um, so. All right, let me let me see how I explain it. All right. Okay, so yeah, let me summarize you guys, what you guys said, all right? So you said that um, uh, A2 here, yeah, this guy here is a type of A, all right? And then you're using A1, you know, to call it. 
right? And then B cannot hold a reference to A. Okay, because this one is looking for the type of B. And then you're giving a type of A. And that doesn't automatically match. Right? So I think that actually is a good point. I don't know if you saw it. But the ones who choose B, 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 B. All right. So let's say that you, you write that here. Okay, you have an instance of a B here from A1. And we're talking about only the first line. Okay, guys. Only the first one. We're just talking about this one. So um, we're calling the test method. It looks like there, there is two options, either this option or that option. Now this time you are actually passing an A2. Now for like, as you can see, David, Catherine, uh, Arash, all of them actually said that, okay, B, um, sorry, sorry, A2, this one here is a type of A, all right? If this is a type of A, can you pass that one to here, even though B and A are in the hierarchy? It's actually not because B is a subclass of A. So if this one you're looking for a subclass type and you're passing a parent class type, um, it does not automatically work. But the other way it works, exactly, Arash says that. If you are looking for an A, you give it B, that actually works. Okay, so guys, I know this is a trivial question, but just try to focus on the first line here. It actually gave you a lot of information. Just the first case, try to understand it. All right, especially for the ones who choose B, 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 B. Obviously, this A1 have two options, either this one or that one. But when they come to this kind of input A2, um, you really cannot call this one because A2 does not fit to this method here. All right, so that's really the key to understand this question. So the first output is definitely A. All right. So Professor, I'm a little confused because A2 is not the instance of the the class B. Yeah, A2, the instance is the B, but the type, okay, the type for Java, all Java sees A2 is an A. The type really determines the, what it looks like directly to Java. Okay, Wait, it, it uh, doesn't okay. matter about what the, the this, this, this type you choose to instantiate, that determines which, you know, class uh, or method version to use. But the left hand side, the declaration really gave the type, just like you declare integer, you declare a string. Okay. Oh, I got it. I yeah, got it. That's really the type you are looking at. Uh, professor? Yes. So the answer, I, I'm kind of confused on the answer. So you said the answer is going to be A, 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 B? Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. So some of you actually got it. I think is a rush gave the right answer. Let me actually check. I saw, I saw one answer correct. No, actually, uh, we got it, right? Um, yeah. Okay. So and then also Arash. Arash did explain a very important point. Okay, let me find this chat history. Uh, where I think he said something. Let me see. Okay, never mind. I think I saw I saw something. All right. So the, the, the bottom line I get here, if you actually understand this first line here about this type, did you actually realize that even though I put that in a polymorphism, but this method here, this guy here, and this one here, they are not overriding. Okay. This one is not overriding this one, simply because this input type are different. So what is this called? This two method here? Overloaded, very good, David. All right, 
So this that's why I, I intentionally you know get you guys confused on here. This is not a overriding situation. This is only overload. Overload means that you got the same output, same master name, and the difference is the input parameters. Either the type are different or the number of input parameters different. So this is the overloading situation, not overriding. Right? So if you understand that, everything will become more clear because eventually the version of the measure depending on the type of the object you're giving. So this first one, A1, you know, you're calling this one, we just need to look at the type of A2. The type of A2 is on the left-hand side, it's the A. So we actually have to call this one here. Besides, you cannot call this one, I already explained. The type doesn't match. So that's why the first one is A, okay? Now the second one is the B1, okay? B1 is the type of a B, but B still have access to both methods, okay? Because B can also call the parent class. So B also has the option for both. And then you're giving a, a same object A2, A2 is still a type of A. So that means in overloaded, that it actually go to this one here. So the second one is still A, all right? So the third one, a little bit different. Now the third one is A1, right? Now A1 uh, is a type of A and you're trying to call in this method. And then uh, you, you essentially the B and now you're actually uh, passing a B, right? And since I said that this is not a overwrite, And this is getting probably more, a little bit more confusing, guys. Look at the third one here. Okay, so not sure if I can explain this well, but uh, because this is not overwrite, okay, A1, um, in fact, A1 can only call this method here, if, if that makes sense. This is actually the only option from the A object. If you, if you define A1, A2 like this, you can only call this one. This one is not even visible, okay? Because this is not overwrite, this is overload. Oh, so you, you can only call this one here and then this one is requesting an A, but this time you give a B. That's fine because B is a subclass, so B could be a type of A. So you can send B to here. And so this one will still be executed without errors. So the third option is still a. All right, so we'll come back to this one a little bit later. And then last one is a little bit simpler. Last one, you got a B type here. Now you got access to both, to both of this. And then you're giving a type of a B here and then using the overload, so you're calling this one. So the last one is actually B. All right. So this one here, um, you know, be careful. But in fact, they're all the same thing. Uh, just understand, first of all, they're overloaded. If they're overloaded, then you cannot access all the things down here. You only have this one option. But if it's overridden, then that's fine. You can call either one because you, you have the class B type here. All right, so I'll put the slides here. Um, <laughs> Of course, nobody programmed this way. Yeah, I'll put aside here, but it really helps you to to understand uh, all the you know the polymorphic override and overridden. Yeah, looks like everyone hates this kind of program. Yeah, me too. I, I even myself, I need to kind of read this one again and again to make sure my thoughts are correct. Yeah, yeah, I I I, I totally agree. Yeah. But uh, some of the things I want to put a little bit more about this one, yeah. So that's the end of the, you know, um, that's the end of the the quiz. But let's go back to the code. All right. I just want to review briefly about the visibility when you have this kind of a, a hierarchy. Okay. So let's actually create a new package here. Okay. A little bit more about the demo. All right, let's now use A and B. All right. Okay, so we just use, uh, you know, uh, again, I just use a game, okay, a PC game, something like this. All right, 
Um, again, there are some kind of visibility issues you need to understand, right? So you can have one method called uh, uh, string get game uh, name. All right, so you return some kind of a game name. You can have get price. That's your parent class. And then you can have um, another one. I'll call this one as a Mac PC game. All right, so this is the subclass. It extends uh, your PC game. All right, so automatically you can inherit both methods right here, but you can also override them, right? So you can override them by using exactly the same one here, all right? And uh, this will be the Mac name. And Mac will be a little bit more expensive, so it's a five. All right, so I override it. So now when I start to test everything out, all right, so driver. All right, so this one I will say like a PC game. One will be the Mac PC game. Now, if you try to call g1.get name, uh, let's just print it out. Okay. Get price. All right. So this one is supposed to give us the max information. That is a polymorphism, right? Because we uh, override the two methods here in Mac PC, all right? And then, um, so that you can just get the, 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 the subclass information, all right? So here's my question, guys. So in the Mac PC, okay, so if I'm adding another one, so I'm adding public uh, string, I will say that uh, maybe something else, get Mac uh, shortcut. Oh, the shortcut a rush. Uh, so you do this out and then control space. All right, so in Java, I think this is specific to Eclipse. I don't know about uh, IntelliJ or other editors. Try that one. So there, I think you can define a bunch of this, even like four, you can also do something like this. Okay, but depending on which one you use more often. Okay, so go. All right. So now I added this new method. All right, so this is a, a new method that doesn't exist in the parent class. Okay, but it's specific to Mac PC game. All right, now very important guys here, if I try to call G1 dot get, and I can't get this shortcut. If I try to call this method, this one does not work, even though this method exists here. All right, so that's something I also want to review. Now make sure you're very clear on this, why this is not going to work. Okay, does anyone see it? I add this method called get shortcut in this class. Oh, sorry, get max shortcut. Okay, I'm going to change the name, even this one. It doesn't work because G1 is a type of a PC game. This type determines what are the things you can call directly. Because for Java, this is just a type of a PC game. And even though internally it is a Mac PC game, but from Java point of view, I only saw this type of PC game because that's how you declare that. That's how you give this person its, uh, its identity. And so if I think this is the PC game, I don't know if I can call this one or not because this is just specific to Mac PC uh, game. All right, so that's why back to this example right here. Um, when you are in A, when you declare this one as A, you can only call this one. You cannot call this one if, if this is not overwritten method. So, so no matter what, if you see your constants from A1 to A2, it, it can only go to this, this method, if not through an error. Okay, that's really the key here. The, the declaration determines what types you can see and what method you can call. And then right-hand side determines which version to use if it exists a uh, hierarchy. 
or overwrite. So that's the main point we're trying to uh, review. And if you really want to call this, you have to explicitly cast the type. You have to turn this into P Mac PC game. And then if you are sure that this is the right type, and then this line works, right? Or you can define this one, declare this one with the right type, then you won't need this one because you already declared that type and then anything in that one will be available. But then this approach is not recommended because if you have a hierarchy, if you have this kind of a uh, polymorphism, you need to declare that with the parent type so that you can take advantage of the polymorphism. If you do that way, you won't have the polymorphism in the future. Okay, so that's why uh, the, this is a better way to declare and instantiate. Hopefully that makes sense. Yes, so so Ryan, uh, so all the eight type of object can only call the method in A, except um, some of the methods are overwritten by the subclass. And we can try to use overwritten version of the subclasses. All right. And then Ralph, you're asking, uh, you got a G2, G1 equals to G2. Yeah, so that, that kind of thing is very easy to, uh, to think about. Uh, Rafi, you're, you're very confused about the, you know, uh, the assignment. Assignment is actually pretty easy to deal with, right? So I create another instance like this. All right, so you set G1 equal to G2. All right, so in this case, you assign G2 to G1, and you're changing G1's reference but you are not changing the type of the G1. So G1 is still a type of a PC game. And you're just changing the reference. So I'm pretty sure if you call G1 dot this one here, you still, as you can see, it's still not available. You can't see that method. It's, it doesn't give it to you. Okay, because- It's uh, not the okay. case with the Mio and Bark thing. Uh-huh. You know the, the 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 classes which uh, you told in the beginning of the class. So I was thinking if you write a one equals a two and then call a one make noise, you still will get a mu. Yeah. So no, you, if you say a one equals to a two. Yeah, and then yeah. You, you write a1 dot make noise, you still will get a mu, right? Because a1 no, is- no, no, you get a bark because you give a2 to a1, right? So a1 will point into the, to this one here, will be the dot. So why don't you get, in this example, when you write g1 dot get mac, you still get an error. Yeah, because, because a1, a2, when you are assigning them, you are assigning like a, a so, all right, so let, let's see how to explain that one. Uh, th these two are um, different because the, like, well, we need to get another one. Okay, so let's, let's see this one. I have a Windows PC game. All right, if Windows PC game also extends the PC game, that's the dog and cat situation. Did you see that? This one is the parent class and then the other two override it. It's a, it's a different scenario. Okay, so let me give you this example here. Okay, and then this is Windows game, and then Windows game A2. All right, so parent, and then two subclass. All right, and then you can also do something called like a get win or cut. So, like I got a P G1, I can do another one, G2, with the windows, right? Copy the code here. Two, 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 all right. Let me comment on this one, make sure. So you, we got a two object here, right? Oops, sorry, why is this thing here? Okay, so Mac game, Windows game, right? 
So that is the cat and dog example. So this is just like a cat, this is just like dog, right? So if you're saying that, okay, G1 equal to G2, and G1, I say, you know, still I try to print these two, which one is gonna print? So you are assigning G2 to G1. G2 is actually the Windows PC game pointing to this object. So you're seeing that G1 also point to that one. So now you're getting the same information, right? So both should be Windows game. That is the, the dog and cat example. So, Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, but then this one is a little bit different. Okay, so if you're getting another one, uh, and then you, you, let's say this is a G3, right? But then you're saying that I gave G1, uh, G3 to G1, and that point is yes, so G1 will be uh, also a PC game, but, but then you cannot change the declaration type of this uh, variable. G1 itself is still a PC game, or you're changing the reference at the real time, but you're not changing the type. You cannot change the type of the object. Just like in Java, if you define some integer b, okay, you can never change the type of b anymore. In Python, you can do that, but in Java, you can't. Once you declare that one, the type is fixed. You can't change it anymore. And then this one, you are only changing the content and pointing to different. Um, so actually, it's the type that determines which method is the object is going to call, right? Exactly. No, no, no. It, the type determines which methods are visible. That, that's the point I want to show you here. So if you are a type of PC game, these two are the only one you can call. You cannot call the other extras, like this one here. There's a get Mac shortcut. You can't call it because you can't see them because you're a type of a PC game. You're, you're, you don't know if you're a type of a PC, Mac PC game, all right? But for the, for, the red, for the overwritten method, because these two methods are overwritten, they're the same as your parent class. So you can still call them if the type is instantiated as a PC, PC, uh, P, a Mac PC game. That's what happened here, right? So even though you, you put that at a G1, but then when you create a type, you create a Mac PC game, so when you are calling them, you can still see the Mac PC game information. But other than that, you cannot call any other method from the Mac PC game if they're not showing up in the PC game. So this one determines the visibility. This one gave you the decision on which version to use if there is a override. All right, let's see some other methods, uh, questions. Kind of, yeah. Honestly, so that, that was kind of a right. Um, uh, but yeah, so, so again, I, I, would, I would say that determines what methods are visible. Um, and, um, but then you can still call the subclasses if it's overwritten uh, situation. Yeah, but, but, but I think you, you guys got the, the idea that that's the correct understanding. All right. But obviously, guys, all of this quiz, guys, don't misunderstood, okay? It doesn't really, I don't want to show you, uh, oh, you actually haven't learned all the detail from object oriented program or job. I, that, I didn't mean that one. And in fact, nobody's going to write the code like this, okay? Nobody's going to write the AB situation or some of these very special cases in interfaces, okay? So that's not going to happen. Um, um, but then the purpose here to have everyone have a better understanding about the, some of the uh, basic stuff. Because later on, you will see most of the structure, the designs will be based on inheritance and polymorphism. All right. Any other questions? All right, cool. All right, guys, well, I think that's all I wanna share with you today. And next time we're gonna move on to a little bit more Auto higher support. level uh, uh, like principles. Yes. Sorry, on the line 16, 
Yes. You're still calling G2, uh, sorry, line 15, you're still calling G2 get name. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah, that's right. But it, it should be the same, right? It should be the same because, because uh, basically it does make what G1 and G2 yeah. is pointing to G2. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a great point, David. Yeah, so, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot who was asking about this. <laughs> Securing your code, yeah. Get this kind of a bad code like this and then people won't be able to understand like something like this. That's a great point, yeah. All right. All right, well, yeah, good, uh, good examples. I'm very glad you guys are like a, uh, getting it and uh, yeah so uh, again every while, once in a while to go back take a look at some of this um, I'll, I'll upload the slide to the blackboard as well and it definitely helps you to understand some of the concept but yeah again this part also important make sure that you know that this one here depend uh, determines the, the visibility right okay Yeah, so Amanda was asking about the, uh, about that example, right? Um, right, so again, Amanda, so a couple of things to make sure you understand, okay? This A and B, okay, let me actually make it bigger. Uh, since now we're going, again, coming back to talk about this one, uh, I want to simplify the understanding. So the A and B are in the same hierarchy. The inheritance, that's true, this is the parent, this is the subclass. Looks like you got a two method that looks really similar, but they're not same because the input type is different. This is takes the type of B, this one takes the type of A. Okay, because of that, when we're talking about this two method in the same hierarchy, and it's called overloaded. Okay, it's not called overridden. If it's overridden, that means this one is going to overwrite uh, and replace the other version. But if it's overloaded, then it exists two version, but uh, you will decide which one to use um, based on the input parameter. If you give me a type of A, then I'm gonna call this one. If you give me a type of B, I'm gonna call this one. All right, so that's something you have to understand first. This is not overwritten. This is uh, uh, overloaded, all right? Now with that in mind, then when you go to the code here, okay, so just to go through this code one more time. Um, so first one, you have A1, what is a type of A1? Because I said the type is important. Type determines the visibility and the method you can call. Since this is the type of A, okay, so you can call this one here because it is a part of the method from A. You can definitely call that one. Can you actually call this one here? Okay, the answer is no, because this method sits in the subclass. It's not overwritten. It's not overwrite. So you cannot call this one at all, no matter what. This, this method is just like a get piece Mac shortcut method because that method doesn't exist in the parent. So you cannot access that one at all. So you don't even think about this one. So if you see the type is A1, when you call it test, this is the only option you have. And you're passing an A2, that's perfect because A2 is the type of A. So the first one is gonna show you A, all right? Now the second one is B1, all right? B1 is a type of B, all right? Since the type of B, now you do have the option for both because you are sitting in the, in the, in the child class, you can, you can call this one, okay? But you can also call this one because that's your parent class you inherits. But which one to call, again, de determine, de de depends on the type of the parameter because these are totally two types of parameters. And then looking at the code here, you're passing an A2, so A2 is the type of A, so we're gonna call this one. And in fact, you can't recall this one because A2 doesn't fit to this B. And this one matched the type perfectly, so overloading, so you call this one. The second one is D1A. All right, 
So the third case, same as the first one, you are A1, that is the only option. Okay, don't even think about this. Right? You can't call this, you, you don't have the visibility because it's a totally different method. Okay, and then you're passing a B1. Even though B1, the type of B, it looks like it doesn't match the type directly. However, because B, B is a subclass of A, so B can still work here uh, because you can pass a subclass to a parent class. So this one, this line actually is gonna work just fine, okay, by passing a B. So this is not gonna throw error, so you will still get an A. And then last line here, you got a B1, which is a type of a B, so you got a two options to choose. Now you're dealing with a type B, and perfectly, this is uh, the best match method. So you're gonna run this one at the end. So this one gave you an answer B, all right? Exactly, yeah. So because B is a type of A, so you can treat that one as um, uh, a type A. So give you an example right here. Okay, so back to my example. So PC game, right? So let's see, I got, um, um, maybe I got, you know what? I'm gonna write a different thing, okay? I'm gonna create a class, I would call it Amazon site. All right, so there's something called a public void sell game. You can sell a PC game. All right, so you can call this one. Now, this is how I'm gonna use that, right? So I'm gonna come, come in here, I create an Amazon site. All right, I'm gonna call cell game. I'm gonna pass my G1 because G1 is a PC game, so I can sell that perfectly, right? But can I do this? Can I do a, a, a G3? You see G3 is a Mac PC game, right? And then when I look at the Amazon site, it only takes a PC game. Can I pass a Mac PC game? Well, the answer is of course. Because Mac PC game is a type of PC game. Of course you can pass it. So let's try it. So if I send a G3, it works just fine. Okay, this way works fine. However, if you are saying that I only can sell Windows. Okay, or, or sorry, let me go back here. Now, if I do another one, public void, I will say sell to Apple store. And then that way I only can sell Mac PC game. All right. So if that's the case, let's try it. Now I go back to my driver. I want to sell more games. This time I want to sell it in the Apple store. If you do G3, perfect, because G3 is a Mac PC game that matches this method perfectly. But if you try to call, um, if you try to sell G1, it's not gonna work. Because G1 is just a PC game. Even though you know, oh, you know, I, I actually created this one as a Mac PC game, it doesn't matter, Java doesn't know that. Because just Java doesn't want to trust that you mark that a PC game, who knows what you're giving me? Why, why do I want to take the risk? That's why by default, it's not gonna take it. You cannot just uh, pass a parent class to a subclass, but you can pass a subclass to the parent class. Okay, hopefully this example makes more sense. I think, it's, in my opinion, you should just take a look at the code, try to write different examples, that will help you a lot. Um, but, um, you know, again, I think just by talking and showing uh, this one, uh, it only helps partially. Yeah, but obviously these are the most confusing points about this whole Java thing. All right, okay. All right, let me see, any other questions? Um, mm, let me see. Uh, yeah, for parent time pass a parameter, the child one can be passed as well. If the parent type is a pass as a parameter. Yes, if certain things work with the parent type, and obviously the child type will work for sure. Okay, because you think about that, that uh, that's why I said last time, 
any of the children will inherit everything about the parent. That means they have all the attributes from the parent. They're the same as the parents, but they have more things. Okay. So that is also a principle we, we will talk in the coming uh, uh, lectures. When you are building a healthy, a right inheritance hierarchy, you want to make sure your child has everything your, your parent has. If not, you should not put them into the same hierarchy. That's a wrong hierarchy, okay? You need to redesign your hierarchy. So we have a specific principle for that. All right, let me see some other question. If you had overload the cell game method with one that takes a subclass of PC game and input, which method will run? Okay, sorry, let me take a look at this one more time. So uh, if you overload this one with one that takes a subclass of a PC game, could you give me a, like a specific example? All right, so in here, give me the cell game method. Oh, I, I think I got what you're saying. So, so you're talking about this one here, right? Is, is this, is this uh, uh, okay, yeah. I believe that it matches the type first. So if you got a perfect ma matching, I think it will go to here first. I think that's the rule. So let's try it. Okay, this is like a solid game version two. Okay, so I, I think that's, that's basically what happened here, guys. That's what happened for the last case. Because for B, you can do both this method and that method. You're passing a B. Okay, it works for both. But eventually we choose this one first because it is a perfect match, right? So I think the same case for this. Good question. All right, let me try this one here. So if I try to do, for example, G1, uh, if you do G1, I'm pretty sure it's still using the same version. Okay, let's try this. And then if you do G3, I think it's gonna use the other version. Let's, let's see if that's the case. All right. Wait, why? Let me try this again. All right, so you see, first one use the regular version, this one using the V2 version, because the G3 is a type of a Mac PC game, so that match it more. Okay, so that's the logic. But good question, okay, I didn't solve about that point. If the parent type is passive parameter, the child one can be passive. Yeah, that's sorry, I just answered that one. All right, let me see something else. Yeah, exactly. So, new you earlier you asked. That's exactly in a type of A, you don't even have like access to the things in B because it's not overwrite. Yeah, so you just cannot use it. Just like this. Mac shortcut example. That's that's that was my point. Yeah, and then uh, you want to ask me earlier about the var variable. Yes, so variable type is important. If they're different in general, you cannot assign them to each other unless in the, they're in the hierarchy. So you can assign a child to parents, but then you cannot assign a parent to child directly before you do the cat type uh, the type casting. All right, well, very good discussion, guys. Um, let me know if any more questions. And next week, we'll get to some new topics.